Wow, you're zipping through space in a large ship as big as three New York City Central Parks. There's a lot of commotion going on. No, it's not some alien invading the spaceship. It's a very important day. The date is January 22nd, 2700. You've just been born outside of the Earth's atmosphere. Happy birthday! There's a medical team attending to everything. Futuristic gadgets help out with every aspect. And the view from the giant spherical glass ship is nothing but the incredible vastness of space. You can't even see Earth anymore. The spaceship is flying to a new destination millions of miles away. ETA on reaching that new host planet? Decades. Fast forward a bit. You're 25 years old. And this spaceship's the only home you've ever known. (laughs) So far. You've learned all the ins and outs of the ship. You start your day in your dorm, which has all the essentials. A small compact bathroom, a mini kitchen, a bunk bed, and a magnificent view of the stars and planet outside the ship's reinforced glass. And you never need to worry about space radiation. The ship has an everlasting magnetic shield that reflects space radiation, so it doesn't seep its way onto the ship. Otherwise, there'd be big problems. The ship was designed to have artificial gravity. Astronauts normally lose 1-2% to of their bone density every month they're up in space, since they're just floating around all the time. But now, I mean in the future, in deep space travel, they're able to solve this problem. You make your way out of your dorm and see a wave of fellow crew members making their way to work. They're all gliding through on their advanced mini hoverboards, and everyone's wearing different colors, a space-age uniform. Yours is blue, so you hop on your board and join the blue wave. You get to the underpass of the space transport and begin your work. As an engineer on board, your job is super important, maintaining the ship and keeping it running. But something's wrong. Numbers are flashing all over the panels, and the dreaded red light won't stop blinking. You alert your co-workers, but they don't know what's happening either. Quick, you keep checking the logs and all the complicated equations, but nothing adds up. Panic starts to spread throughout the ship. The hair on your arms is standing on end. You try to click on as many buttons and switches as you can. The buzzing keeps getting louder and louder. The light is flashing brighter. Some of your colleagues make a break for it, and you're all alone in the red room. Suddenly, finally, your supervisor rushes down to help. After a while, the two of you figure it out. Whew, that was close. You still have a lot to learn about managing the ship. Since your early years, you were assigned to work as an engineer. You were great at physics, chemistry, math, all those sciencey things. It's just another day in the office. But on this ship, you may make captain one day. After work, you get a call from your friends wanting to hang out. And when I say call, I mean a phoneless device that lets you communicate with anyone while seeing all their info through a hologram projection that only you can see. You can also use it to listen to old tunes from Earth. Pop music has now become classical music, and movies are now 3D projections of your own imagination. You make your way out of the underpass and go up to the space plaza. That's where everyone hangs out when they have time off. Some cafes, restaurants, a barber shop, even an ice cream parlor. You've never hung out anywhere else. The space transport is essentially a small city, which has all the important things society needs. That includes a biosphere full of animals and plants from different climates on Earth. Many tropical forests, many deserts, many rainforests, you name it. The biologists on board make sure to keep it all healthy, so you feel like you're at home. Not that you've ever set foot on Earth. You enter the wild savanna and see some gazelles galloping around. A few wildebeest seem to be rummaging around, and a small pack of lions are on the prowl. In the jungle, you feel the humidity and the thick leaves and bushes all around. Some mountain gorillas are playing, and there are little tree frogs here and there. And lurking in the trees, making its way down for a sip of water, is a jaguar. Over in the dry desert, you see some roaming camels, a little rattlesnake slithering its way out of the heat, and some little scorpions crawling around in the sand. You've learned a whole lot of biology these last 25 years. You know all about Earth, but you've never been there. Weird. After the tour of nature's habitats, you hear an announcement on the PA. It's the captain. The new planet is hours away, earlier than anticipated. 
Everyone, assume positions for landing. Everyone on the ship rushes to their dormitories, except the key crew members needed to run the ship. You strap into your bunk bed that turns into a seat with fancy interstellar seat belts. You look out your window and see a blue dot in the distance. It gets bigger and bigger, and it looks a whole lot like Earth, from far away at least. That didn't take all that long, only 25 years. Wonder what's going under the hood of that spaceship. You look back at your life in space, knowing this first part of it is coming to an end. It's kind of like living at the South Pole. At the bottom of the world lives a small community of scientists who work between winter and summer doing all kinds of research, from climate and geology to meteorology and astronomy. Their lives must be similar to living here in outer space. They have their own bunkers, scientific labs, and even recreational rooms for sports and music. The nature on the planet you're approaching is unlike anything on Earth. Tropical trees soaring higher than the highest skyscrapers. Oceans that are so wild, there are hurricanes that last for years, just roaming about. The pilot announces the landing. It's all good. Time to get to work. You unstrap yourself and head outside to see the new planet for yourself. Walking on land feels like, well, like arriving on a new planet. The humidity is thick and the wind is warm. The ship landed on the tropical side of the planet, where studies show is the best place to begin a brand new settlement. It's not going to be easy. Humans usually begin new settlements next to lakes and rivers. Think of the Mesopotamians, the ancient Egyptians, the Aztecs. The list is endless. They began as small settlements until they grew to be fully functioning mega-civilizations. By trading and exploring, they were able to advance their technology, learn new languages, and discover awesome cooking recipes. Hey, I could go for some pasta and sushi right about now. According to scientists, being born in space could alter the way humans look. Human heads could be bigger within thousands of generations. Who knows? There's no way to simulate it on Earth. We can even have different new skin colors, since we would need more melanin, that pigment stuff that protects us from sun radiation. Being closer to the sun or any hot burning mass of fire might mean we'd produce more or different kinds of melanin to protect us. We might turn dark brown, purple, gray, or even green. We'd have to wait a couple of million years to find out. And with no gravity, humans would have to get used to having a lower bone density, kind of like birds have. That means we'd probably be weaker than our old Earth human selves and have some slightly odd physical things going on. Gravity is essential for our balance, and mobility is one of the key factors for human survival. So without gravity, we'd most likely have exoskeleton suits for walking and running, or taking out the trash. Now, nothing like this is going to happen for a very long time. They're still brainstorming how to bring someone into this world, or out of this world. Technically speaking, outer space is considered to be 62 miles above sea level from any continent on the world. Beyond that, endless possibilities. Hey there, Brightsiders! My name is Tom, and today I welcome you to have a peek into the future. Let's imagine uh, it's your birthday and uh, the entire family is here to celebrate. It's a nice group of 562 people. Perfect. It takes a village to put down 1,000 candles. You cook that 40 layer cake and build that house yourself. With the new average life expectancy, you have enough time to master any hobby in the world. This is no sci fi plot. There is someone in the world today who will live to be 1,000 years old. It could be your neighbor's granddaughter, your best friend, or even you. Thanks to better nutrition, easily available clean water, and a huge progress in medical science, people are already living much longer today than they used to 150 years ago. Now scientists are trying to figure out a way to slow down, halt, or even reverse the aging process. One of the leading experts on aging, Aubrey de Grey, is positive humans can medically defeat it. Aubrey had a successful career in IT, then he fell in love with biology and decided to solve the aging problem. 
So he went back to Cambridge to earn a PhD in biology and later invested most of his inheritance in his project. Almost all living beings age, but they do that at different speeds and in different ways. Quahong clams can live for over 500 years. A female mayfly has a full life cycle of less than five minutes. Scientists have already managed to extend lifespans of yeast, worms, fruit flies, and small mammals thanks to genetic manipulation and stem cell therapy. All living beings are made of the same chemical building blocks, so similar strategies could work for humans. Dr. DeGray explains aging as a result of metabolism going wrong. He discovered only seven types of possible causes of it. If scientists can learn to settle that molecular and cellular damage before it gets too dangerous, they could prevent people from aging. Dr. DeGray believes that uh, we'll be able to solve these problems in mice and stop their aging in 10 years with stem cell therapy. When it's done, scientists will need another 15 years to find uh, similar solutions for humans. Stem cells provide new cells for the body as it grows and can replace lost or damaged cells and tissues that your body wouldn't manage to cope with naturally. It's possible because they can divide over and over and over again. Plus, stem cells have all the genetic information and can turn into any other type of cell. Adult stem cells are already used to treat some conditions. There are technologies that, in theory, can take and relocate strands of DNA and add or remove DNA. It would be as complicated as taking 850 volumes of Shakespeare and editing just one certain letter. Changing DNA in the future can help preventing aging and extend life. With every round of therapy, the patient would get healthier with younger organs, nerves, and bones. Dr. DeGray explains, humans of today will unlikely invent the therapy to make you live to 1000. But scientists can give humans an extra 30 years. It would mean some extra time for new research. New therapies could be invented then and give humans another 50 years. This way, step by step, humans would stay ahead of aging and someone living today can eventually celebrate their 1000th birthday. The oldest officially confirmed age record for humans so far is 122 years. I sure hope my retirement plan would last that long. Don't want to be working at a fast food joint when I'm 370 years old. Well, anyway. Evolution has never stopped. Some scientists say it's been going up to 100 times faster over the past 10,000 years than ever before. The average body temperature has been going down with every decade for the past 200 years. In 1868, 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit was considered normal. Now, it's around 97.9 degrees. This happened thanks to progress in curing some infectious diseases that speeded up metabolism and made internal temperatures higher. It's also because people spend most of the time indoors with a nice cool climate now and don't need to make an effort to keep a natural body temperature. Over the last 150 years, the average height of an adult has grown by 4 inches. Humans also grew 14% heavier on average, some heavier than others. This became possible thanks to better nutrition, food, distribution, healthcare, and hygiene. Scientists are sure this trend will continue in the future. Taller and heavier people will need more calories, so this could be a problem. The genes are constantly changing too. Several thousand years ago, adults couldn't drink milk because a specific enzyme was turned off. When raising cattle became more popular, more and more people got the genes that control lactose tolerance. In India, a large group of vegetarians developed a mutation in one gene let them process certain fatty acids from non-meat sources and convert them into important nutrients for a healthy brain. People on a meat-based diet rarely have the gene. The bones are becoming weaker and less dense. This process started around 12,000 years ago along with farming. Diets and physical activity changed back then and it made the human skeleton more fragile. 
This trend will likely go on as people are moving less and less these days. Some people who live in houseboats in Southeast Africa have developed larger spleens than their neighbors. This adaptation helps them stay underwater for a long time. They spend most of their lives fishing and collecting shellfish. In 100 years from now, people will get regular body upgrades even if they don't need them for medical reasons. Some companies already produce mechanical exoskeletons to make factory workers more productive. There are also exoskeletons for skiers to make them faster. With the technology of the future, there will be more robotic limbs. They will mimic or replace certain organs and will let people live out their dreams. You'll be able to climb Mount Everest at 80 with bionic organs controlled from your smartphone. Okay, you'll get new senses as well. Technology will let you feel the seismic activity through sensors on your feet, hear color waves through an antenna in the skull, predict weather through gadgets in your ears and have other senses you can only dream of now. This could make humans closer to nature than ever. Or not. Humans will outsource more of their cognitive abilities to gadgets. Most people already can't read maps because gadgets just tell them where to go. There will be brain-machine interfaces and you'll be able to transfer your thoughts online and analyze them. You already do something similar to your steps and your calories with apps to track them. New apps will let you track how much attention you pay to a certain problem or analyze an argument with your partner in detail. Hey, no need for people skills anymore, right? It's possible that scientists will find a way to increase the diameter of uh, the neurons in the brain. That would give you an incredible reaction time, a real-life slow-motion function when you need to. With genetic engineering, more humans will look alike to fit the general idea of being attractive. There will be strong lines, straight noses, beautiful bright eyes, and all facial features fitting the golden ratio and perfect left and right symmetry. The brains will continue to grow, so there will probably be larger foreheads and maybe larger eyebrows to go with that. As it is highly likely humans will start living on other planets, we have to adapt to their harsh conditions. Lungs would have to be redesigned to gather more oxygen in new atmospheres. Tissues would have to change too to filter the dangerous elements of these different atmospheres. The further away humans will move from the sun, the dimmer it would be, and the larger the eyes and pupils would have to become. It would let them absorb more sunlight. They'd also develop new features like low light vision and sideways blink to help protect the eyes from the cosmic rays. In 1,000 years from now, computers will become more and more human. To somehow compete with them, humans will become more integrated with robots. Tiny nanobots will swim around your body to boost all your natural abilities. Humans will be able to record sounds and have built-in phones in their ears along with super hearing. They will also have super eyesight and super health in general which sounds quite nice actually. Merging human minds with computers will give everyone super brains. You'll be able to do the most complex equations instantly. Search the web and pull up any fact in your mind. You won't need to type any messages. You'll communicate with others through electrical signals and direct thought transmission. Humans will be an interplanetary species. Mars is the most likely new place of residence. New humans born on Mars will be taller than anyone on Earth. The Earth's gravity is three times stronger than that of Mars. Out there, the fluid between vertebrae would extend, making spines longer. Humans will most likely become immortal. To make it possible, scientists will have to figure out how to download consciousness into a machine. They are already trying to transfer consciousness between animals right now. Well, I can't speak for you, but for me, that's a bit of a nightmare. Hey, they can keep their nanobots. I'll just keep sitting here, watching the clouds go by and enjoying the sunshine. Like they say, it's not about the number of years in your life, but the life in your years, right? If you think about it, your life is a lot like a video game. 
you could say it's like a role-playing game most of all. All you need to do is add the right icons to your screen, like your health and energy bars. There's your inventory as well, with your phone, wallet, and keys in it. And of course, everyone's got a skill bar. But let's start from the very beginning. Even when you're a baby, the game difficulty is already set to hard. All your skills are at level zero, and your health bar is tiny. Which is why you only sleep or eat most of the time to make sure it grows. When you reach level one, you unlock the ability to walk. But the world map is still closed to you, because there are lots of dangers you're just not ready for yet. It turns out, this game has a really long demo mode called Childhood. Most game features are locked for now. Nearly all of your actions are set for you by your parents. They're like quest givers who help you gain the experience you need to make progress. Ignoring their instructions can make leveling up real tough. But if you're polite enough, they'll give you your first gold coins. As long as you're a child, you'll constantly be leveling up. But of course, it takes a really long time. Your health and skill bars get bigger as you go to school. It's not the most exciting magic academy, but the students there still carry out quests and learn new abilities. Congratulations, you've reached level 18. Now we're really getting into this role-playing game. You're facing a classic video game choice. You have to select your character class and the skill path you like the most to help you conquer the world. While lots of games have different character classes, most of us end up being the same one in real life. The adventurer who travels the world doing different tasks to earn golden experience. And you still have tons of quests to do. That's right, it's also time to leave behind the safe part of the map where you grew up. This unfamiliar world is a little like a dark forest full of enemies. The trouble is, the bad guys out there are sometimes hard to overcome. These monsters have names like responsibility, work, and money. They keep coming back even when you thought you'd finally learned how to deal with them. But if you didn't slack off at school, one day you'll overcome them all. Imagine you're in a restaurant and your date asks you if you like animals. You confidently reply, I love cats. Your date sighs and says, I'm more of a dog person. Quick, go to the menu, reload the checkpoint, and change your answer. Uh, sorry, but you can't do that. Remember that this is one tough video game, and you're still playing on hard mode. This means that you only have one life. You can't just save and then go back if something goes wrong. Every decision and every action has consequences for you and the other players around you. But that just makes it more interesting. Interaction with other players is one of the most important parts of the game. But remember, you need to be a little careful here. The admins are a lot stricter than for other games. Breaking the rules and upsetting people could lead to a completely different game mode. And there isn't much to do in this version, except look at four walls and a grating on the window. On the plus side, the character customization in this game is fantastic. You can change your hairstyle and hair color, get tattoos and piercings, really anything you want. Oh, and the clothes? There's just no limit to the designer's imagination. With each new level you reach, you open up new abilities and new quests. You encounter tougher challenges, but get better rewards, like more gold or a bigger house. But there's one quest line that's really unique in this game. When you feel experienced enough, you can start a family and even create a new character. You'll transfer some of your skills to them and be their companion in the game until they're ready to go into the dark forest to fight the monsters on their own. You'll never get to control this character though. In this game, the plot isn't always about you. The AI does what it wants. There's a bunch of other stuff about this game that's really unusual as well. Let's take the graphics. They're just incredible, like Ultra HD. And the resolution is absolutely stunning. But the gameplay is pretty complicated compared to other games. You need to check your health bar all the time, build relationships with other characters, earn gold, and make sure you rest on time. But the story is the most interesting part. It's totally up to you what happens. Sure, it can be boring if you just lie on the couch and watch other people play, but try hard enough and your character could become really important. So you need to put the work in if you want it to be an interesting experience.
But there are lots of cool things in other adventure games that are missing from this one. For example, fast travel. Imagine what it would be like if we had this option. You wake up tired, but you have to go to work. Just go over to the portal and select the right location. Boom! You're already there! I think it's definitely time someone invented this. And we could sure use some cheat codes as well. Of course, no one likes a cheater on the server, but imagine how cool it would be. Don't have enough money? Just type in the cheat and watch the numbers in your bank account double. Feeling sick? Don't waste your health potion. Just use the cheat and your health bar is full again. But I've got to admit, playing at life like this would become boring. Imagining life as a video game helps us understand it a lot. A lot of what we do is about setting small tasks and looking for ways to accomplish them. With rewards and experience, you move on to more challenging quests. Your skills, gold, and health bars aren't infinite though, and you need to manage your resources carefully to reach the next level. Some people think that computer games can be really harmful. They say that gamers spend too much time in their virtual worlds and forget about reality. But there are actually a lot of benefits from playing games from time to time. Many of them are designed in the same way as our real lives, and they have plenty of features that teach us useful things. Games always reward us for our hard work. Playing a game from start to finish and making all that progress along the way can help you understand that it takes time and energy to get what you want. Hard work always pays off. Another useful thing that games provide is communication. Hundreds of millions of people play online games that bring them together in groups and teams. They have to achieve cohesion and use good teamwork to pass through a dungeon or win a match. Competitive games can help people learn to communicate and make compromises. And although it's all just for fun, this is exactly what we have to learn to do in real life as well. Only instead of a dungeon with a scary monster, we have to survive a day at the office with an angry boss. And one more thing. It's been proven that a person's strategic thinking and decision-making can improve when they play video games. In one experiment, a group of 50 young adults who had never played games before were asked to play an action game for 50 hours. Another group played a slow strategy game. The results showed that the action game helped to improve the young people's perception of visual information. Their decision-making skills also improved. This was thanks to the fast pace of the action game. In these kind of games, a large number of events happen one after another, forcing the player to act and make decisions. This can have an effect on people's real lives.